Hello there, my name is Anthony Barokas with IEVA Communications. And today I wanna to talk about 360 live streaming with the Cerevo Live Wedge X and Ryko Theta R. Now, I've talked about live streaming many times using many different tools, but there's a whole other area of live streaming, which is 360 live streaming, where people can move the camera around and look at whatever they want to look at, whether it be um, a concert or uh, a big event where people want to you know, take a look around and look at this vendor, look at that vendor and see all, what all is going on. 360 live streaming is a whole separate thing. Typically, you have to have a 360 camera. We have a Ryko Theta R here. It is this thin little device. I have it in a, a little shoe here. It is this thin little with two lenses. If you're not familiar with the Theta series from Ryko, uh, it is a very candy bar little kind of device with two matched lenses and it automatically puts it together into a um, very long piece of video that in playing it back, the software rewraps into a sphere. This Theta is a little bit different than the consumer versions. The Ryko Theta R is designed for live streaming long events, like an all day concert, an all day you know, public um, fair or something like that. You can come visit the fair you know, on the fair homepage and see this VR of people coming in, where it's going on, see the Ferris wheel, see all these different things. That's really cool. It's a great little tool. And this is designed from the ground up specifically to do that. There's no battery in this because it wouldn't last all day. So you have to provide power externally from a cable. Uh, and then that's got HDMI out. So it doesn't do the streaming built in. You have to feed it off to something. Um, and this metal case is designed basically as like one large heat sink to dissipate the heat that's going to be generated as this thing does all of this capturing and assembling. Below this, I have the Live Shell X. This is a battery operated multi destination streaming appliance. The cool thing is, you can preset this with YouTube and Facebook and something else like Vimeo or two different YouTube channels or two different Facebook channels. That is really handy, and you've got three buttons on the front to activate each one, turn them on and off, and see the status. It's got a built-in menu system that you can go through with the buttons on the face. That is really cool. And on the back, it's got a USB port. So if you want to hook up a USB Wi-Fi dongle or an LTE dongle, you can stream directly from this device. It also has an Ethernet port. So if you need higher bandwidth, uh, more reliability for a long stream as opposed to LTE because LTE over a whole day, mm, that'd probably get pretty darn expensive. So it's got an Ethernet port. It's got a power in. I'm actually powering it up right now. It's got a built-in battery. Uh, it has a quarter 20 thread on the bottom, as you can see, because it's on this little tripod, and it has a quarter 20 thread on the side, I guess, so you could mount it this way. Uh, it has a micro SD slot on the side. It has an HDMI input. So to get the video from the Ryko Theta into the Cerevo, you need to have a HDMI micro to regular HDMI adapter cable. I don't have that particular adapter cable. I have a right angle that goes to full size and then I have a full size cable and my right angle is going up, not down or straight out because the power port is directly below it. So you can't use a right angle to go down on that. Um, and that leads to one of the first issues that I find with this setup is that the Ryko Theta is designed for all day use and that's great. But the downside is it requires external power, external HDMI, and there's actually a second port if you need to configure the settings. That's kind of laborious. Also, I had, uh, I am not a 360 expert, but I, have, I work with uh, someone who does do a lot of 360 work, and I had him test this out, and his experience was that the built-in mic is not very good. It's mono. Uh, it doesn't have a 360 presence to it, so you can't have sound coming from here and sound coming from there. And it's not that high fidelity. 
there's no microphone input on this model as there are with other uh, thetas because this one's not designed for that. So the Live Shell X has an audio input. However, it's not a microphone input, it's a line level input. So you would need an external amplifier, not an amplifier, but something that would go from a mic level to a line level to get it into here. So it could just be a level adapter or a small mixer. And then if you've got this and that and a small mixer, your package is getting a little bit bigger. It's not as portable and compact as, you know, it just keeps growing. And the cables in a 360 degree sphere, you can see the cables. So if you put the Theta up on um, a tripod and then you run this box somewhere else, then you get a longer HDMI and a longer power. And if you need to like reach in and adjust the settings, then you have to have another USB cable coming up to the Theta. If you put them together, which was kind of like my concept, is that you know you could have the Theta actually mount to the live shell and put these both somewhere. And right now, the Theta is being powered by the USB of the live shell. That's pretty cool. On the downside is I'd have to use Ethernet then to get the signal out. And then you're talking another cable and a power supply coming up to the live shell, Ethernet coming up to the live shell, HDMI between them, USB to power. So you've got one, two, three, four. You've got at least four cables going on and you don't have any configuration. In addition, when I gave this to my um, 3D expert to work on, he found that it takes a bit of tweaking to get all the settings just right. And with Live Shell, you can do some of that on the back end. So you need a laptop to go to the web interface for the Live Shell to execute the streams and make sure that all the settings are right and do the RTMP for YouTube and the RTMP for Facebook and the RTMP for another destination. And all of that is best up. So you need a laptop to make sure all this is set up right. Now, once you've set it all up, you can turn them on and off here. But the downside is you really do need a computer to adjust these settings. And if you need to go in and adjust the image parameters of the RICO, then you need, literally need to connect to the RICO directly with your laptop. So you're talking a cabled solution. The Theta, in my mind, is designed so that it's felt, so that you don't see the camera and it doesn't take up a lot of room and it captures this sphere of video. When you add three cables to it and an external controller that sort of hinders what my image of what the Theta is for. If you have a bigger sphere that more content, more hardware is built into the sphere, that's what that's for. So the Theta is a great concept, but when you extrapolate it out to a device that's just serving as the camera and needs all this tethering, it becomes less effective in my mind. The Live Shell X, on the other hand, I find to be uh, a very capable little box um, I didn't really have any downsides with that except the ability to change the input audio level has to be done, you know, through the back end. So it's not like you can go through the menu and get to all the settings. It's This is good for executing. It's not good for setting up. So you're going to need a little bit of time to set it up and then on site, tick, 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 you can turn things on and execute it as long as there are no changes to what you need to do. Um, when Mike, uh, my 360 expert, was working with this, uh, the image quality was pretty good. The Ryko Theta R is the better Ryko Theta solution. They have consumer models and then they have higher end models like the Theta S and um, the R. Here is a high quality, you know, 360 uh, delivery solution. I would like to see, if you're gonna do something like this, that the live shell has another quarter 20 thread on top, so you could mount this on top, as opposed to like, I just have it on the stand, and it's just sitting here. Um, the ports on this device, and let me do a quick look at the ports here. 
you can see there is a quarter 20 thread on this side. There, uh, the ports on the back are the power port, the ethernet port, the USB port, an audio input right there, and then your HDMI in. On this side is your micro SD. And then of course, if I spin this around, you have the interface on the front here. And I think the uh, live shell does do a good job with the menu system. There you go. And it allows you to, you know, get in there and adjust certain things, but you know, it is a two to four line, you know, you've got audio meters on the bottom to let you know you're getting audio, but it's, this is not the best sort of interface. You really do want to see what the live shell is doing using the, the back end tools, using a computer, looking at the computer end of it. And that way you can really better assess what's going on, especially in terms of the quality of the video that's coming through and making sure that your connections are good, the lighting is good, and the camera parameters are set correctly. You do that on the live shell side, and then if you do need to tweak them, then you do need to run, go and connect into the RICO to adjust the image parameters in that. So as, in as much as you would like to have one solution for everything, these both have strong feature sets, great camera and all day uh, capability, as well as multi-destination streaming and configurability, but they're two separate products that you kind of have to like join together. And it's the joining, as you can kind of see here, it's the joining that I'm having a little issue with. Now, realistically, you could run the Ryko into a laptop and do that, but then, you know, you've got a laptop hanging here. So the live shell being this compact little purpose-built appliance does really give you a certain capability in terms of this is what it's for. You put it in place and when it's set up, you just turn on your streams and you're going. So for that, uh, I think the live shell is definitely a win. Uh, I think the, the Ryko being purpose-built for long streaming, all-day, multi-day events, that's really cool. I just wish there was better glue between the two units. Like if Ryko and Cerevo got together and created a hot shoe on the bottom of the camera so that you would literally just put it down here, turn a thumb screw, and the data passed through, the power came up, the audio, you know, you had a better, you know, connection on top for a good stereo, at least, microphone. That would be more of what I would expect when you're trying to package two items together. But in terms of having something that is more compact than what's out there now, in terms of tethering a computer and all of that, I think this is an attractive package. Take a good look at it, see if it works for you. My name is Anthony Barocas with IABA Communications. Thanks for watching.